this thing on? Working? You ready? All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in to our fourth installment, number four, of Pinewood Derby Speed and the science of building a fast Pinewood Derby car. All right, this is our final installation. We've talked about weight. We talked about building the block of wood, making our axle slots where they're gonna go. We talked about the axles, the wheels, how to put all those things into place, what uh, techniques you can do to get them ready. We've talked about rules. We've talked about designs of cars. We've talked about what it takes to build a fast car. So here we are. It is the night before race day. And where are we at? Well, we have already gone to practice night. That is a very, very important thing because most packs, most organizations are gonna give you a chance to practice. You're gonna have the track set up. You're gonna be able to go in and run your car as many times as you want and get it ready to go before the actual race day. If your car stinks, you got time to go home and fix it. If your car is great, you can confirm that. You can see how you're stacking up against the competition without showing too much, and then take it from there. One word of caution on practice days, the kids, you know, they get a little squirrely, they're having a good time. It's not as structured as race day. You need to be careful. The, I always coach the kids on, these cars are fragile. If you drop this thing, it's probably going to break and it's probably gonna be hard for us to fix. That we're putting these axles on so lightly, they're, they're not really adhered too well. Uh, stuff might be held on with hot glue. Um, you can break the wood. There's a lot of things that can go wrong if you drop these cars. So the children, I strongly encourage you to, to coach them. Be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. All right, so we are going to talk about what should I take to the race with me, take to practice night. What do I need to do to be ready to race my car? Uh, I like to have a tray. I like to put my cars in that. If we're going to the race, we might have a couple cars. So it's nice to have something to keep them protected. You don't wanna just be walking around with a car in your hand, easy to drop. Give it some kind of, something to keep it safe and protected. I like to build myself a kit to take with me to the race. I call it kind of my, my just in case kit because things do happen. I like to take a drill, have a nice sized drill bit on there. You get to the official scale and find out my car is drastically overweight. I've seen people with a pocket knife trying to shave wood out. Doesn't work so great. Maybe not the safest, not the speediest. If you need to get some wood out of your car, drill it out you can make a lot of holes in a hurry and pull some weight out of that car um, there's lots of applications something else that you might need a drill for never a bad idea to take a drill with you hot glue gun something falls off your weight falls off um, an axle i had one time one of these cars there the, the wood split right on this axle and we're like Oh man, this axle's not gonna stay on there. Now the rules were you had to have four wheels on the car, even if only three were gonna touch the track. Luckily, had the hot glue gun. I was able to make a little bridge across where the axle goes with glue and save the day. So you take yourself some kind of hot glue gun, something like that to the race. Similarly, super glue, can't hurt. You never know what you might need some super glue for at the race. Got the Teflon tape, talked about that earlier. Chances are you're not gonna need it if it's already adhered to the side of your car, but just a good idea to take it. You might end up needing it if yours peels off, something like that. Okay, we talked in the previous episode, thumbtacks. Got lots and lots and lots of thumbtacks because that's how we fine tune our weight. I like to get it, like I said, overweight just barely overweight and start i use the edge of a knife blade and pop one thumbtack off at a time pop one off set it on the scale pop one off set it on the scale until i just barely get it down to the weight so you're able to fine tune your weight thumbtacks and then graphite of course you're going to want graphite 
That's um, your rules are generally going to stay. You can't use any kind of liquid lube, anything like that. I have tooled around, messed around with uh, a sprayed dry Teflon spray. Like it goes on wet, but it dries on my axles. Don't know if it made any difference or not, but it certainly can't hurt. It's not something you want to do at the race, but most people are going to use a powdered graphite. I got this one at the hardware store or maybe online. It's got this needle. So you take the little cap off and this needle really helps to get the, the graphite down inside your axle. So that's an um, important thing to, to take with you there. Another recommendation for the race day is to get there early. You get there early, you can take your time with the scale. You don't want to show up right before the race. I've seen a, a boy show up like right at race time, their car was not ready and they were scrambling. Their weight wasn't right. They were trying to slap a car together at the last minute and it just, it, it wasn't pretty and you felt bad for the boy. Get there early. Watch some of the other races. Um, your chances are you're not gonna be a lot of practice, but you're gonna get some time with the scale and you can sit there and fine tune your weight. Now I did, I've read one theory on dehydrating your car before the race like using dry ice or a dehumidifier or something like that and making your block of wood so that it's ultra dry and then weigh in as early as you possibly can. So you get your car weighed in and it's sitting there and it's absorbing the ambient air and moisture in the air and it actually sucks a little bit of moisture in and it makes your car now weigh more than it did when it weighed in. I think that's a little unethical, a little bit of cheating, but it's a theory. It's something, in theory it works, right? Dried out wood, sucks it up, and now all of a sudden it's a, it's a heavier block of wood. Now, one technique we want to talk about at the race day with our graphite. How do I install graphite and what's the best way to do it? Another thing to talk about is how to install our wheel. We talked about your axles only want to be finger tight because you're going to be taking those wheels on and off. So what I did is I built this tool. You don't want your wheels too close to your car body and you don't want them too far apart. And, but you do want them to be consistent. A stable car is a fast car. So I took like a little rewards car from 7-Eleven or whatever and I just cut a little notch in it. So that notch is designed for the axle. So we're gonna... I'm mom! Well, hello. All right, so we've got our tool that we built and we've got our axle pushed through our wheel. So then the idea is you're gonna put this between the wheel and the body of your car when you're putting it in place. Just slide it in there push it down so it's nice and tight, and then pull your tool out. And that's gonna give you a real nice distance of the wheel and the axle to the body of the car. And it's gonna be consistent on all four wheels. So real free to make, works great. Let's talk about lubing up your wheels before you race. So I've seen different theories and different techniques of people that they like to lube them up and spin them and spin them and stuff like that. What I've found actually that works the best, and it, it sounds a little weird, but I've tested it and it works, is after you lube your wheel, do not spin the wheel again. So when you're at your weigh-in, your, your car is approved, you got your wheel lube on, you're on graphite, don't sit there and start spinning your wheels. What happens is the more you spin them, the graphite starts to fall out, and then there's no more graphite left. So what you'll actually see, if you follow this tip, your first heat, your car will be whatever speed it is, and then it's actually gonna be faster on the second heat and probably faster on the third heat than it was on the first one. Like, uh, we have four lanes on our track, so they had it set so that your car would run in all the lanes, and your car would actually get progressively faster because as it went down the track with the graphite on the axle up against the, the wheel, that it would kind of wear in and it would get faster versus if you spun it all up before the race started. 
So my technique when it comes to the graphite is I'll put my finger underneath it, underneath the wheel with no, uh, no axle in place. And then I'll just start puffing it in there with the needle and I'll fill the hole up all the way. Then I'll kind of tip it on its side a little bit. Then I'll push the, the axle through while it's full of graphite. Then that's when I'll use my tool and I'll push it into the side of the car. There should be enough around the side of the car. Plus you've already got your Teflon tape there that you shouldn't need anymore. I suppose you could still puff a little bit more under the head of the, the axle or up against the, the side of the car where the hub is gonna contact the side of the car, but you really shouldn't need that. But after you, so you've got it packed full, push your axle through, put it on the car. You shouldn't need to spin it up. In fact, don't spin it up. And that's how you're gonna, it's gonna be faster and faster as each heat goes along. So that's, that's pretty much it for building a fast car. Um, all the different techniques, shaping your wood, working on your axles, your wheels, your weights, your go-to kit, your race day prep. Now, the biggest thing though, is to have fun. If you're gonna win, be a good winner. If you're gonna lose, don't be a sore loser. Just uh, have fun with it. And really, you gotta include the kid. It's, it's all about the kids having fun, learning something. You know, when it comes to the kid's first car, when he's a tiger cub and he's in the first grade, did he do most of the work on this car? Nope. Dad and grandpa did most of the work on this car. He did some, he did what he could do when he's in first grade. He painted it by himself, made it look good, um, helped out with the weights and stuff like that. By the time he was a Weeblo too, he built this car all by himself. So it's really, you gotta keep the kid involved and it's gotta be, gotta be fun. So, and it can be just as much fun to win for a good looking car as it can be to win for a fast car. Have fun, keep the kids involved, bring home some bling, have a good time with it. Oh, one more closing tip. If you've got an unusual looking car, it really helps to write on it the directions of the car so like front, this one I was just screwing around. So I put front, rear, middle, everything all over it. Um, but a car like this, where it's a flat car, it looks exactly the same all the way around. It's important that you put front and back on it. So that the people that are handling the cars and putting them on the track, that they know what the front of the car is. You don't want this car to run backwards. It's gonna end up making a difference in how fast it is. So thank you for watching this series of videos on Pinewood Derby speed and the science of speed. I hope everyone goes out, builds some fast cars, give me some comments and likes and subscribe. And I'd really like to see pictures of your cars, hear how everybody does. If you got any questions, put it in the comments. I will almost always reply to a comment and give you an opinion, try to give you some assistance on building a fast car. Have fun out there. Enjoy your scouting career. Enjoy your Iwana, whatever race you might be doing. Like, subscribe, comment. Appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye.